Hello, and welcome to my video series in chemical informatics. My name is Kimberly Dees, and I am a chemical and health informaticist living and working in the Metro DC area. I am also a PhD candidate at Rutgers University studying biomedical informatics with a concentration in healthcare informatics. Today's video series is on using the NINE platform to convert SMILE strings into SDF mole files. Thank you again for joining. Now let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with converting SMILES to SDF mole files using NIME. Before we do that, I wanna go over a couple things that will be useful for you as you go through this video. Some of the prerequisites you'll want to have, <coughs> excuse me, include having a basic general knowledge of chemistry and data, and by data, I'm specifically referring to being familiar with CSV files. You also need to have a familiarity with NIME since this is a more advanced course, and there are great introductory courses available both on the NIME website and on Udemy, and then finally, a willingness to learn. Some of the resources that you'll find helpful in going through this lecture and others in chem informatics include the NIME website. I've also found the book Intro to Chem Informatics by Dr. David Weil extremely useful. It's available on Amazon, it's relatively inexpensive. And then finally, the website chemlibretext.org is foundational for my chem informatics journey. So what are some of the important terms we're going to cover in this particular video about converting SMILE strings to SDF mole files? Well, first we're gonna be using the Chemical Development Kit node, and that's more information about that is available on GitHub's website. We are also gonna be using the RD Kit module or package, which is an open source chem informatics and machine learning tool. Again, you can find more on their website we are going to be specifically creating SDF files, which stands for structured data files, and they consist of atom and bond tables that are used to convert, to convey chemical structural information. And then finally, what are SMILES? They are Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System, ASCII strings, and they are also used to describe chemical structures. Now, before I go directly to the NIME, platform, I want to first show you what the workflow is going to look like. Available here. And as I mentioned before, these slides will be available after the lecture, and I will provide a link to my GitHub site where you can download all the information, including the data files, which I actually use to convert into SDF mole files. Now we are ready to transition to NIME. OK, so in the upper left hand corner are the folders that I have created with the workflows that I'm doing in a number of different areas, including mostly chemical informatics. The midsection of this left hand column shows the recommended nodes provided by the workflow coach, and I would encourage everyone using NIME to enable this functionality because it provides suggestions into NIME into nodes that may be useful for your analysis. And then lastly is a node repository. Here I've typed in CSV, and what that does is pull up the CSV reader node, and what I'm able to then do is drag it into my workflow. That would be if I were starting from scratch, so it worked like that. Okay, so in importing a CSV file, we must first place the file someplace where we can easily assess it. In this particular case, I configured this file to be in my chem informatics workflow, which I have highlighted on my upper left hand column, and I've placed a file uh, with a list of impurities, which I exported out of Python. I started with a list of named impurities. I put them in Python, converted them into smile strings, and now I am working to convert those smile strings into C SDF mole files using the NIME platform. So when you put this, when you initially put this in, you'll see a highlight of what's in the file itself. You check it to make sure it's what it should look like. You would click apply. And then in that case, you execute your node. Looks like it's already been done. And you open your file table and it should look very similar to or exactly like what you just imported into the node. Now we're going to go on to the next column. And the reason we are renaming one of the columns is because we need it to be read by the software of the CDK software on the back end. 
So we configure that by we double click on the node. We highlight the column we wish to change the name of. And then that gives us this box that you see over to the right. And then we place the name that we want to change the column to. We click apply and then OK. Now we're able to execute the node. Now one other thing I want to say, you notice that the first two nodes are both in green. The remaining nodes are all in yellow. The nodes come in three colors, red, yellow, and green. At least the notation underneath the nodes come in three colors. And what that means is that it gives you indication as to whether or not your node is ready to be executed. So as an example, if it were red, then that would mean that there's some troubleshooting I need to do with the node. Maybe there's an inappropriate, inappropriate file extension, et cetera. That lets you know that the node is not ready to be execute, executed. When you see a yellow config, yellow color, that means that the node is ready to be executed. And then finally, when it's green, it means that the node has already been executed. So now we're going to move on to node number three, which is to replace our missing values. So for any of you that are in the data field, you probably have a thorough understanding that missing values can sometimes be problematic for conducting analysis. And Kim Informatics is no different. So in this particular case, we're going to right click on the node. We're going to configure it to replace all of our blank spaces with the character in a you would click apply and then you you are able to run the node and when you execute the node it should replace all of the spaces in your original file with an na value okay. so we open up our output table and if we can see we've changed the column name to smiles table and all the spaces that were previously blank now have an na value okay so now we're going to move to the first area of the uh, the workflow where we're actually doing some conversion of the molecules, we're using the CDK node. And basically what that is, is a package which allows 2D rendering of structures, and it also allows the conversion of smiles or the generating of smiles and the parsing of smiles values. So here we're going to configure it to point to the column that we wish to do the conversion on. That's the smiles value column. We want to generate 2D coordinates and then we will click apply. It's already been done. The node is yellow, so it's ready to be executed. We click execute. And what we are left with are parsed molecules. So basically it took the smiles values and converted them into a 2D rendering of a smiles value. Now, if you right click in the space of the column, the column header, you will get an option of available renderers. In this case, the default value is a CDK, mo CDK molecule. However, we can convert that back into a string if you prefer that. I always leave these in the default configuration, which in this case is a 2D molecule. OK, so now we're ready to go on to the next node, which is the conversion of the data in the CDK column to an RDK formatted uh, substance. We again configure that by selecting the column. So we are selecting the, the column output or the column input, which is the CDK smiles value. We are going to have a new column titled smiles value, which will be the RDK version. The destination format that we're selecting again is the SDF file. So we would check all of those, click apply, and then run the node. So what we are left here, so we have two columns which appear to be the same. We have our CDK smiles value, which is a 2D rendering of the substance in the first row. And then we also have this last column, which we just created, which is the RDK rendering. And you'll notice here it's SDF smiles value. So what that means is that we have the option by right clicking in the header to view this output as an SDF string, which is ultimately what we want to do. Now it's okay to leave it in its default default configuration, which is an RDKit 2D configuration of the substance, because in the last step is where we will export as an SDF file. Okay, so before we can execute this node, we first must configure the node for acceptance of the file. So we do that by creating a name of the file. In this case, I'm calling it smiles to SDF2. Again, we're selecting the CDK smiles value column. In the lower section of this node, we are excluding molecular weight monoacetropic because we already have molecular weight in another format. 
So the right, what's in green are the columns that I'm including in my output table and what's in red is what's being excluded. So we would click apply and then run that node. As you can see, um, when it when you have not created a new name, it will have a warning sign here on, on next to the yellow color of the node. The that's not present here, so that means that we're ready to execute. We select execute, and now we're left with SDF file. So I will show you that in a second. Okay, so now we're looking at the SDF file output. We started with a CSV file of, of small strings, and we wanted to convert those into an SDF mole file. The extension for this document is SDF. It is similar to a text file. So let's go through and see what we have here. So the first line, CDK, remember that was the algorithm that we originally used to get the conversion that we now see. So CDK assigns a numeric value to that substance. Remember, this was a list of impurities. This one is CDK, and this is the identifying number associated with that impurity. The second row, first, the first column of the second row represents the number of carbon bonds. The second represents the number of bonds present in the molecule. The list of zeros represents stereochemistry, that being RS, or the presence of the stereocenter. And then the V200 represents the version or file format for this SDF mole file. Now, when we go to the third line, the first three columns represent the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the first element of this particular molecule, that being carbon. And then the following values represent the net charge. So just to summarize, a mole file gives us quite a bit of information about a substance. It gives us a list of atoms. It gives us a list of bonds. It gives us information about 2D or 3D spatial coordinates for each atom. It gives us a number of atoms and bonds within the molecule, and it gives us attributes associated with those bonds or atoms. OK, so now we're going to scroll down a little further and just explain that the values here represent what's called a the values in this last column, last columns here. So not the coordinates, not the element, but these zeros, the rows here from this point to the right. That's what's called an atom block. Now, when we scroll down, this is what's called a bond block. So again, we're describing connectivity between the atoms as well as connectivity between the bonds. Now, remember, I also pulled additional information about this particular substance into this mole file. And that's what you'll see here. There's a column that represents the Kimball ID for the substance I pulled, or for the impurity in this case. It's called raconium, the molecular weight, the um, lipophilicity, or a log P, molecular formula, and finally the inchy key. So when you get to these, these four um, dollar signs, that means that we are at the end of the first substance in this mole file. And that's true because we have another CDK with a different value. So that would be the output of our SDF file. Again, thank you for joining me in this video series. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to put them in the comments. I will also provide documentation on my GitHub site, a link to which should be available with the video. Again, thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.